Hey you all, I hope your day's going great. In this tutorial, you will learn how to work with models in Django, how to migrate it with the database, how to use the shell, how to filter a query set, how to attach functions to your model class, and more. In the models.py file, let's go ahead and create a snippet model for storing coding snippets. We'll get rid of the comment and create a class called snippet. And this has a subclass from models.model. And now we have to specify the fields we want this snippet model to have. The first one is going to be a title, and that's a models.char field. And this one needs a max length attribute. So let's set max length to 100. And then we want to have a body, which is going to be a models.char text field. Then we want to capture the date time when this snippet was created. models.date time field. And there's an attribute we can add called auto now add, which we can set to true. And we are going to leave it at that for now. And first we want to run the manage.py make migrations command. That will create the new migration. And then manage.py migrate. And you can see that it applied more than the migrations we just created, which is why before we had this red warning, which now shouldn't be there anymore. And then enter the manage.py shell, just to do some experimentation from snippets, which was our application name, dot models. We want to import the snippet model. And then we can call snippet dot objects. And the objects is the so-called model manager, but you can go back to my design pattern series and go more in depth into that if you want to. And then we want to call the dot all method on that model manager. And this of course gives us an empty query set because we haven't created any snippet yet. Snippet dot objects dot create. And we'll set the title equal to h1 snippet. Then the body should be just an h1 opening tag and an h1 closing tag. Pretty simple. And then we want to call the dot save method at the end of that to actually hit the database. And let's just hit the up arrow to go back to our snippet.objects.all command. And you see that we have one item in there. But of course, it's not useful at all how it's presented to us. We have no idea what's in there at all. So just make sure to close this. And we can add the done the string method, which takes in the self. And this method is used to tell Python how it should represent this object. Simply, we want to return the self.title. You see, we now have a snippet, which gives us h1 snippet. So it's pretty clear what's in there. Let's go ahead and add another snippet now, so we can test out the filter method. Snippet.objects.create. And that's the title equal to python function. And then the body should be dev function underscore name. And then a backslash n and a tab. And after that, a pass. So that should actually be a pretty good snippet for the python function. Although we could just type it out, but whatever. And then just hit the save method. So snippet.objects.filter, and let's filter by the title. We want to get every snippet where the title underscore underscore contains the word snippet. And you see that we only get this first one because the other one was called Python function. And similarly, we can filter by the title, which contains Python, and we will get the other one. And the contains is just one example, but there are many, many more things you can filter by. And to get one single object, you would use snippet.objects.get. And most times you would do this via the ID or a slug. In this case, let's just say we want to get the snippet with the ID of one. And this gives us the h1 snippet. But when using this, make sure to keep in mind that it could give you an error if the snippet with that ID doesn't exist. And let's just set object equal to snippet.objects.get with the ID of two. So that's the other snippet we have created. And then we can call obj 
delete and simply delete it that way. And now if we call snippet.object.all, we get only one because the other one was just deleted. Let's now go ahead and populate our template with all of the snippets we have in our database. For this, we need to go to the views.py file. And first of all, we need to make the import as well from .models. And from .models, we want to import the snippet. And we want to set snippet underscore list equal to snippet.objects.all. And in here, we want to use snippet underscore list as the key and then our snippet list as the value. And this will give us a query set, which is very easy to loop over. And to do that, we are going to go in the snippet list.html again. And I guess we can do that in an UL actually. Yeah, let's do that. And full snippet in snippet underscore list. And end full. We want to have a list item that contains an a tag with the href to the appropriate directory, of course. So let's set the href equal to URL. And then we have to, of course, include the ID as well. So just snippet.id will do the trick. And then the A is going to say snippet.title. And now if we click on it, we will get directed to the correct detail view. And now with that in place, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the actual detail view. We can use the get object or for a full function, which takes in the model name, which is snippet, and then id is equal to id. So that's pretty similar to what we did with the get method. Only that this now takes care of handling the case when there is no snippet with this id and we don't have to do it all ourselves. And we're going to set the snippet equal to the output of this. And of course, make sure to import the get object or for full function. And let's just copy this line and return the render to snippet detail.html. And adjust the key and value pairs. And then we're going to create a, actually we can pretty much copy this entire file. and create snippet detail.html and paste in the content snippet detail just making some adjustments and of course we don't have to loop over this because we only have one object and in this h1 we can just print out the snippet.title and then we are going to use a pre to just put in the snippet.body and you can see that we get our correct output. Nice. And back to our snippet model, we can of course add more methods to this if we wanted to. Let's just create one called body preview. And this will return self.body. But of course, it's not gonna return all of the characters, just 50 of them. And when calling our method inside of the template, you don't actually need to use the brackets as we always do. Let's just simply type in body underscore preview. So just for demonstration purposes, let's set this to only five. And you will see only five being printed out. Nice. So yeah, of course, there are many, many more things you can do with models. As I said, create your own custom model managers, things like model mix-ins and so on. But I covered that in my video about Django design patterns, which you can go back and watch if you want to. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In the next part, we are going to be jumping into class-based views See you next time and cheers.